Welcome to Plentiful Profits. Uh, I'm Kelly Sparta, as always, and uh, today we're going to talk about uh, how you can use the Profit First system, which I am in love with, to help you get your business organized around your finances. Uh, we have talked about a lot of things, but we have not talked about your money yet. <clears throat> so we're going to do that today. I'm just getting over being sick, so I apologize, but I may cough every now and again. So anyway, the uh, the the thing that we need to talk about is we need to talk about the structuring, right? Because I don't think we talked about structuring your business. So if you are um, doing business under anything other than your personal name, you must file either a DBA, which is doing business as with your local town or city, or an LLC, which is turning your business into a corporation. Now you can, for tax purposes, now let me just say this out loud, okay? I am not a tax professional, okay? I am a business owner and I'm gonna give you advice based on what I do personally in my business. You should go and consult a tax professional to find out whether or not it's the right thing for you in your business, given your personal financial situation. Um, so please do not take what I give you as gospel. I'm just giving you, mostly I'm giving you things to think about, okay? So with that said, um, you will need to set up your business in some fashion, right? So if you're a DBA or if you are what is known as a pass-through LLC, which means you register as an LLC with the state, which gives you a lot of um, legal protection uh, because and then they can sue your business, but they can't sue you personally, which is, that's the reason why you do it. Uh, in the state of Virginia, it cost me $100 to set up my, my LLC when I set it up. And it cost me, I think, 50 bucks a year to keep it set up. So that's pretty inexpensive. Um, if you set up your LLC in one of the states that does not tax state taxes, you could save yourself some money doing that. And Wisconsin is known for that. Nevada is known for that. Um, and they all have ways to set that up. There is a company in Wisconsin that's something like Wisconsin LLC registry or something. I, I don't know, but it's like 200 bucks to set it up and they do all of everything you need. And then I think it's a hundred dollars or $200 a year to maintain it. So um, if you are in a high tax state, like say California, because California I know is like an 8% in rate and then you might have local taxes too. You may want to consider setting up your LLC out of state in one of those tax shelter havens. Again, consult your tax professional. So uh, with that in mind, I just want to say this. Your local tax person who does your personal taxes may or may not be the right person to talk to about this sort of stuff, because if they look at you blankly when you talk about tax havens and stuff like that, they are not the right person to talk to, okay? There are people who just do taxes for personal taxes, and they don't know jack about business stuff, all right? I'm going to pause while I can blow. Okay, sorry about that. And put the cough drops in so I wouldn't have a cough and it's making my sinuses drain. Yay. Anyway, um, so you want to get the legal entity for your business set up, however it is that you do that, okay? From there, you can then set up your bank accounts. Now, if you're running your business out of your personal bank account, I'm gonna give you a big old, you know, no, no finger to that. Um, you know, I'm gonna because that is the accountant's worst nightmare. And it is really a bad idea in terms of being able to track your taxes. The ideal scenario is to set up multiple bank accounts. Okay, and in your, in your platform, you're gonna see that there's a whole list of these. I am basing these based on the ones that I use. <clears throat> I highly recommend that you purchase a physical copy, not a digital copy, a physical copy of Profit First, uh, which is the book by Michael Michalowicz. And I highly recommend you get the physical copy because he's got like graphs and charts and you need to be able to go back and forth in the different pages and it's a total pain in the ass on the digital copy. 
Okay, so you don't want to do it on a digital. You want a physical copy. And in that book, he explains to you exactly how to lay everything out and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now, I didn't do all of it. I did it for my business. I did not do it for my personal finances. I probably should go back and do that, but I have not done that. And it's been almost a decade, so it's probably not going to happen. But <laughs> just for your reference, I have not done this for my personal uh, in my personal finances. However, it has been revolutionary for my business finances. I used to struggle every single year to get my taxes done. At the end of the year, I would be doing an entire year's worth of bookkeeping. And of course, that made me miserable. And so some years I just didn't do it. And there was a time when I had four years of outstanding back taxes that I had not turned in. And I'd go figure I was having a hard time with my money because I was out of alignment with my money. I wasn't in responsibility around it. I was just going, la, 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 la. I don't know anything. You know, I'm ignoring it. It'll be fine. So what I want to say is that if this describes you, please don't feel shamed because yeah, I'm the last person to shame you. Okay. Because I was there, right? And I would constantly be struggling to come up with the money for my estimated taxes. And which, of course, meant I didn't, right? I didn't come up with money. And at the end of the year, I would have to pay it all plus penalty. And that just got expensive, okay? Not to mention the penalty and interest on the four years I just didn't file, right? So note to self, if you don't, if you file, you don't get a don't file penalty. <laughs> you didn't file penalty. So it's always worth it to file. And then they they will give you a payment plan. I know because I was on a payment plan for a long time. I finally got it paid off, but um, they will give you a payment plan for it. So don't panic, okay? Now, with that said, get in, get into alignment with your taxes. That's what I'm going to say. Because your money will be hamstrung until you are in alignment with your responsibilities around your money. And, you know, T. Harv Eker, who used to run The Millionaire Mind, I don't know if he still does, but anyway, uh, he had a brilliant thought, the, you know, a brilliant analogy for this. And I absolutely have found this to be true, which is that if you are handed a single scoop ice cream cone as your money from the universe and you drop it on the ground, you know, you're not going to look at the universe and say, can I have a triple scoop, please? Right. Well, you might say it, but the universe being a good parent in this scenario is going to look at you and be like, uh, how about you get one under control and then we will give you two and then you get two under control and then we'll think about three, right? So that is often how our mindset works. And so, you know, I'm not a big fan usually of the universe being parent, but in my experience, you know, we are that, we have that internal parent that does that, that goes, oh, well, if I have too much money, I might get myself even deeper in debt, right? It's like, mm, okay, so we get it together, right? Okay, that's, that's number one. Get your legal entities set up, get your bank accounts set up. Now, <clears throat> I have listed in your forms, in your classes, <clears throat> excuse me, I can do this. Um, I have listed in those classes, uh, in, in the class materials, that you should have an operating account, a prepaid or sa savings account, and you want this to be an interest-bearing savings account, a tax account, which again should be a savings account so you get interest, a business income account. That business income account is only for the money that you've received in the previous 15 days you know, uh, half month. You should have a vacation and sick leave account so that you have cash when you're not working and a profit account, okay? Those are the primary ones that you should have on hand. Now, when you are picking a bank for your bank accounts, you want to pick a bank that does not charge fees on checking your savings accounts because having this many accounts and having fees, that, that gets to be very expensive very quickly. Okay, so you definitely want to do that. Now, 
make sure that you know what the minimum balances are on your savings accounts, because oftentimes the minimum on a checking account is a dollar, but the minimum on a savings account is a hundred dollars. And so you don't want to be pulling money out of that tax account and bringing that account balance to zero or one dollar and then find that you get a ten dollar or twenty dollar charge for being under your minimum balance on your savings account. So just be aware that you you know know what your minimum balances are and make sure you don't go underneath them. Okay. All right. So any questions so far? All of these accounts that you open would be under the same EIN LLC and yeah. none of them to be. Correct. Yeah. So here's the thing about EIN and LLC. Thank you for mentioning that. Um, so if you're going to do just a straight pass through LLC, you can use your own social security number as your number for that. If you ever want to do payroll, if you're ever going to pay payroll, or if you, for some reason, are worried about giving out this number in the event that you need to for somebody in your stuff and you don't want to give them your social, you can register for free on uh, irs.gov for an FEIN number, which is a federal employment identification number. Okay. And that allows you to pay payrolls and payroll taxes and things like that. And it also gives you a number that's specific to your business instead of to you. Okay. All right. So uh, you may also, when you're thinking about your business setup, you may also decide to talk to your accountant about what's known as an S corp. You can legally with an LLC, you can either file as an S corp or as a pass through LLC. An S corp will require that you do payroll taxes for yourself. Payroll, you have to, generate a payroll for yourself at least once a year. And you have to pay payroll taxes into the government based on that payroll, okay? Um, that's an additional expense, an additional thing, but it does a few things for you. Um, it changes the way that the taxes work uh, around your your income tax. So if you're, um, if you're making a lot of money and you want to leave some money in the company and not have to pay taxes on it immediately and you know all of that, you can do that. There is um, There are some benefits. If you're filing uh, payroll taxes for yourself with the state and federal governments, uh, and then you will also be required to file unemployment insurance for yourself, which means that if you ever have to close the company, you will have unemployment available to you. Um, so that's under the current laws. So who knows how those are going to change, but just that's an option. Um, and then there's other ways that you can set things up. You can also set up a retirement account for yourself. You can set up a lot of other things. There's, um, SEP IRAs that you can do to, to shelter some of your cash. If you decide that you want to do that, um, and you can put more money into an SEP, which is self-employed person, SEP IRA then you can into a regular traditional IRA. So you could, uh, you can fund a traditional IRA. I, I don't know if you can do them both. You would need to check with a financial planner on that. But uh, I think the limits on a traditional IRA right now are about $7,000. Um, whereas an SEP IRA, uh, I believe is like 30% of your income. So if you can live on the 70%, then having that 30% go into uh, retirement account is a great way to uh, shelter a lot of the cash up front. Okay. Now, yeah, I'm not doing an entire financial planning thing here. Again, consult a financial planner, right? I'm not a financial planner. I'm just telling you what I do. All right. So next thing, keep track of your expenses. All right. This I know is the hard part, right? So I got audited a few years back. And they asked me for my receipts. And I walked in the door, not only with receipts, but with dates and times and who I met and what it was about on every single one. And I correlated that with my calendar before I walked in the door for the audit. They took one look at it and they were like, oh crap, because they knew that they were not gonna be able to get me, okay? So here's the deal. According to the IRS, last I checked, consult with your tax professional, 
you can you can not have a receipt for up to $75 worth of expense. Okay? Now, I will tell you, they don't like to let you have that. So the more receipts you have, the better off you are. And it's very simple. You get your receipts, you shove them in your purse, put them all in one place. And every two weeks, when you do your accounting, you pull it out of your purse, you go through every single receipt, you determine what is tax deductible, what isn't. And then you throw out what's not tax deductible and you keep what is and you label it with what it was, right? Very simple if you do it every two weeks and keep every freaking receipt, okay? Why? Because sometimes you're not gonna get a receipt for something and you did get a receipt for something else earlier in the day and you could just say, oh, we did it here and here it's roughly the same amount, it'll be fine, right? Then you have a physical receipt, right? sometimes you're going to think that's not tax deductible. And then two weeks later, you're going to be like, oh, I got a piece of business out of this that I didn't think I was going to get. And it came out of this conversation. So now it's tax deductible because it was a business conversation, right? Keep every receipt. Okay. Now, with that said, write on the receipt who you met with and what it was about. Because when you do that, the IRS can't do anything about it. Now, the other smart thing you're going to do is at the end of every year, you're going to take all those receipts, you're going to stick them on a photocopier, and you're going to photocopy them. Why? Because receipts fade. And when you need them, they will be gone. But if you have a photocopy and you say, hey, this is what that receipt used to look like. Here you go. They don't want to see the photocopy. They want to see the original. But if the original is faded and you can show the photocopy, they'll live with it, right? So that's the difference. And especially if you've written on it, so it's clear it's the same receipt, they can tell. Okay. <laughs> now, what's tax deductible? Your meals, if you are having meals with someone else who is a potential client, um, that is a tax deductible expense. However, you will only get 50% of that. Okay. You'll, you'll claim the entire amount, but there's a section on your taxes that says meals. And you'll say, this is the entire amount. And they'll say, great, multiply by 50%. And so, <clears throat> but you do need to track them. All right, supplies. Anything you buy for your business is, a, is tax deductible. Uh, courses that you take, education. Things that you take to improve yourself as a business person are tax deductible. Now, does that mean personal growth courses are tax de deductible? Well, if you're in the spiritual growth industry, yeah, I don't see why they wouldn't be. There's a good argument for it. For it. It's like, look, I gotta stay ahead of my clients. This is part of what I teach, blah, 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 right? For the average person on the street, you can try it, see if you get it. If not, they may disallow it, okay? <clears throat> the Anything, your internet is tax deductible. Your, uh, your, all of your software as a service, services, you know, your URL registrations, your online services, Zoom calls, everything like that. It's all tax deductible. Um, your postage, if you receive, if you have to send something out and, and you send it to a client, that's tax deductible. Basically, anything that you are doing to further your business is tax deductible. Your advertising, your promotion, your marketing, all of it's tax deductible. If you hire a virtual assistant, that's tax deductible, right? So all of these things are tax deductible. Now, if you ha have a, a space in your home that you are using to run your business and you do not have an outside space that you're paying for, okay? So it's very, very important that you know this. You cannot claim a home office deduction if you have an outside office. So home office deduction only works if you're working only and ex exclusively in your home. Now, in your home, you have a room that you have dedicated to your work space and you're gonna measure that room and you're gonna figure out what the square footage of that room is and you're gonna measure your whole house and you're gonna figure out the square footage of that. And then you're as a percentage of space, you can take that percentage off of your utilities, your, and again, the internet will, will count for this as well, unless you're paying for an upgraded internet specifically for business, in which case that's um, your phone usage. If you're using your phone for business and personal, then you'll have to adjust for that um, as a percentage of usage, right? The um, 
Uh, if you have a housekeeping service, the percentage of that goes to that. Uh, if you are if your your rent, a percentage of that goes to it. Um, now, you will want to check in with your sales with your tax professional about declaring home office space if you have a uh, if you own your home especially if you're thinking about selling anytime soon. When we lived in Richmond, we our home went up in value pretty dramatically uh, in the two and a half years we were there. And we chose not to do the home office deduction because we didn't want them to claw it back out of this because of the sale price and weird stuff that happened there. So check with your tax professional about that. Um, and so all your utilities, basically water, sewer, whatever, if you want, you can get crazy and like charge your coffee and anything that you would consider to be an office thing that you would get in a regular office. You can keep track of those purchases separately and write those off too. If you get a lot of offices claim their coffee, right? So that sort of thing, coffee, paper towels, you can take a percentage if you want to get really anal hype and retentive. I don't bother with that and don't find it is worth my while to do so, but it's up to you as to whether you want to do it. Um, so you're going to keep track of all of your expenses. Now, that sounds like a lot. I know. However, once you get it set up, it's pretty easy to keep it going. And by pretty easy, I mean my accounting takes me anywhere from half an hour to an hour twice a month. And so... Pretty easy, right? Now, getting it set up, the beginning of every year takes me about an hour to switch everything over to a new year and get everything set up and whatever, whatever. Um, and at the end of every year, so here's the here's the joy, right? At the end of every year, it takes me about 40 minutes to do all of my accounting for my taxes because I've done it throughout the year because I've set up the system, okay? 40 minutes. And now it's not doing the taxes. I send my taxes to somebody else. I let them do that. That's their job. I'm happy to let them do that. Could I do it myself? Probably. Do I want to? Oh, no, I don't. So I pay somebody to do that, which is also tax deductible as a business expense, okay? So all of these things, right? Now, I'm gonna show you and I'm giving you guys a copy of this spreadsheet because I put this spreadsheet together for myself and I'm giving you guys a copy of a blank version of this spreadsheet for you. And this way it'll make it easier for you to set up. Now, I wanna be really clear. This is not a checks and balance spreadsheet, okay? It is not a, I can, you know, I tie the, I do tie the income to the income on the spreadsheet so that I can see that it matches. Um, I am terrible about the expense side. So you can tie it if you choose to. I'm just lazy. So I may miss some things here or there. However, um, good, good accounting practices say that you should compare your income against the income in your bank account, which I am absolutely doing as part of the process. And I'll show you how I do that. And then you should tie the expenses against the expenses out of the bank account, which you can do. I just haven't. Um, I should probably start doing that. So I'm being totally honest with you guys about exactly what's going on with me. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, okay. So, uh, let me go ahead and share my screen with you so that you can see what I'm doing. Oh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I had a feeling I was on the wrong mic. Do you hear me better now? Yes. Yeah, I had a feeling. I'm like, wait, am I on the right mic? I don't think I am. Okay. So here is the, let me share my spread, my, um, share my, Thing with you, my screen with you. Share screen. There we go. Okay. So this is going to be what you get <clears throat> when you click through to <clears throat> your link in your platform. Okay. Now, what this is, is this is split up. Let me just turn this. Okay. 
So this is split up into income first uh, through the 15th. Now, I just sort of have random days in here that's not one every day. You're going to change these days based on the payment date that you receive things. So I have recurring income, and this is set up for recurring income in this area, okay? If you do not have recurring income, then you're probably only going to need the miscellaneous payments section tab, which is in the next one over. But this, um, but know that your taxes and profits are, yeah, it'll still work, even if you don't fill this in. So this is based on recurring income dates. And so that's what this is set up for is the 1st to the 15th and the 16th through the 20th or through the 30th or 31st, right? So you're doing two different sections of time. And the reason this is split up this way is because you're going to do your accounting every 15 days, right? So 1st to the 15th, you'll do on the 20th and the 16th through the end of the month, you will do on the fifth of the following month. Okay. And so this is split up. This spreadsheet is split up in that way specifically to make that ease more easy. Okay. So that's the income section. And then we have the expenses section, recurring expenses that are due. This is the fifth or no, that that's not right. <clears throat> yeah, that's right. My bad. So the reason this is set up this way is because you're making the payments on the fifth of the month uh, into your bank accounts and to, you know, transferring funds and everything like that. So the expenses are coming out from the fifth to the 20th. And that's when those are going to be coming out of your bank account. And so this is set up this way instead of first to 15th and, and 16th to the 30th is because of the, the way that you do the transfers so that the money is there when you need it. Okay. So, Food for thought, I keep a $1,000 float in my account. That way, I always have a buffer in case I miss uh, calculate something or if I buy something extra that I wasn't accounting for in my, uh, in my monthly plan. You know, I always keep an extra $1,000 in the bank account just so that I can make sure that I don't go NSF if I screw up some little bit of numbers right? And generally that's fully sufficient. It probably would be fine with $500. I don't think I've ever gone $500 over in a month, but a thousand makes me feel happier. So, okay. So this goes from the 5th to the 20th and then the next one down. Um, so this, I also have previous months, contractors and sales commissions, right? So I have contractors who work in my business. I have uh, coaches that work for me. I have a virtual assistant, uh, actually about to be two virtual assistants. And so all of that would go in here. Um, and so that I pay those out on the fifth of the month and that's why they're in this section, okay? And it says total deposit into your OPEX operating expense account on the fifth of the month. And so that's how this math is worked out. As you, you look and the red number is the amount of money that you have to have in that account for you to pay all the bills that are coming up. That's how that flies, okay? Now, the next section is from the 21st to the 4th. And this is the total amount that's regular and outgoing. And then down here, I also have rando expenses that don't recur or that only recur, recur like once a year, right? So the rando expenses are down here and they're things like GoDaddy purchases of URLs and, you know, uh, you know, the random purchase of a hundred dollar course or, you know, something like that. All of that stuff goes down here. If it's not a monthly recurring expense, it goes down here underneath. Just for my mental state, I like it better that way rather than having a million things in the upper levels. <clears throat> and then that, as you can see, I have a lot of those because that's I, all I did was delete my data. I did not change the format of the form. So I have a lot of these rando expenses, you know, things like postage and whatever, right? Um, and then down here, I also have an allowance section. Now, I used to put $100 in this every single month. I used to say 100 bucks random allowance, right? So I always made sure I was building my buffer. And I have found that that's not as useful 
when I've gotten up to more cash, 100 bucks doesn't make a difference one way or the other. So I stopped doing it, but I've left that in there for you in case you decide you want to do it. So if you've only got a couple hundred dollars extra and you want to make sure that you add more to your buffer every month, you can just add a hundred bucks in there and that way you'll guarantee to put in enough money to do that. And then, so you deposit into your OPEX account on the 20th and then that, that number is here. So you know exactly how much money you have to have in the account for that month. And then, oh, I'll take this out of here. You don't need that. And then um, total expenses are there. And then total income is here. And then this divides your expenses as a uh, percentage of your income so that you know what your percentage profitability is. Okay. And this will tell you your average monthly profit and your average monthly income. And then it will give you an estimate of what your quarterly taxes due will be. Now, how does that math happen? Well, we'll get to that in a minute. <clears throat> First thing is I'm going to come over here. <clears throat> you don't need that. Um, I'm going to come over here. Oh, these these little tally points out here are important because they tell you whether or not you're, you're uh, balancing. Because it'll say, okay... It will add the totals up and down versus the totals across. And if they don't match, that number will be not zero. If that number is not zero, then somewhere in your in your sums is you're either missing, you added a line and didn't have a total on the far end, or something is a, a miss with your calculations. So check your check your calculations. Okay, now let's go over to the miscellaneous payments because this was recurring expenses, right? And, and income. This is miscellaneous income. Okay. Now, if you're doing readings and stuff like that, that's one-offs, <coughs> this is where you're going to put your income. Okay. You will put it in to this section. You're going to put the day it was paid and you're going to put the person's name and what they bought. And then you're going to put the amount. And this will total that up, okay? And then, <clears throat> so this is the 1st to the 15th, and this is the 16th to the 31st for income. And down here, it totals those up for you and then gives you a total for the month, okay? Now, this total for the month um, includes because <clears throat> this month, this number, includes the income expenses for from the first page too. Okay, or it includes the income rather from the first page for the right section. So remember I showed you the home up here. So January from the 1st to the 15th, the total is here. That's C13, right? Here. It pulls C13 plus C18, which is the 1st to the 15th here total. Okay, so that's going to give you the total amount that should be in your business income account. Now, how do we know it's in our business income account? Because that's the place that we have our money paid into. Okay, so when you're going to transfer money, if you're, let's say you're getting your money through PayPal. When your money comes in from PayPal, you're going to transfer that money into the business income account at your bank, not into your operating expense account, not into your personal account, into the business income account. That business income account should have the total amount of money that you have paid in plus a dollar or whatever your minimum balance is required to be in your bank account. <clears throat> <clears throat> And so every two weeks, there, there's going to be that money that comes in, okay? Now, why do we not just put it into the operating account? There are multiple reasons why we don't do this. The first one is that if somebody does a return and, you know, you, you are un, not expecting it, then the maximum amount of money that can be taken out of your account is the amount that's in the business income account because that's where it gets transferred to. So that's where it gets taken out of. And so that means that, that you don't get 
like a surprise two thousand or three thousand dollar chargeback. Okay, which if you're doing your job right, you probably shouldn't get, but things happen, right? Um, second reason is that in the event <clears throat> or when you go to tr- to um, when you go to balance your account, it is so much easier if the only money that is in the account is that money that just came in through that two week period, that you know fifteen day period, um, and the and the dollar, right? to keep a minimum balance. So that's the other reason why you want to do this. Okay. Um, and so, uh, I highly recommend that you have that business income account and that, and then the third reason is, and this is psychological. So you're going to love this. The third reason is that that money sits in that account and that account doesn't pay anything. And so you have to go in and move that money every two weeks which forces you to do your accounting, which is a great way to keep yourself on track because you can't access that money until you go in and move it. And you don't know what to move where until you do your accounting. So that's the third reason. And it's a really good reason because then from that money, you also pay yourself. Now, according to Profit First, the rules are you pay your taxes first and then you pay yourself and then you pay everything else. And by doing this, you know if your business is upside down financially. Because if you can't pay yourself and your taxes and then pay everything else, then your business is upside down financially. And you need to start cutting expenses or start making more money right quick. Okay? All right. So this gives you your total income. And you should be able to balance this number directly against that business income account. Now, the only way that's not going to balance out. Now, I have you doing stuff on the 5th and the 20th of the month. That's because usually that is fully sufficient time for the bank to get you for for Stripe to transfer to your account or PayPal to transfer to your account. (coughs) Everything that happened in the previous, you know, in in the 15 days, time period that you're working on. So five days of flux to be able to get that money balance transferred into your physical bank account out of your merchant account, whether it's Stripe or Square or PayPal, should be fully sufficient. Now, if the number doesn't match, check and see if you have money in there that was already transferred in that's for the next period. If it is, then you just subtract that amount that that next period is having due out of that and you balance to that. Okay. So let's say that you got $500 in, let's say the first, the 15th of the month was $3,000. Okay. $3,000, but you've got $3,501 in your bank account. Well, that $1 is supposed to be there because that's your minimum balance, right? The, the $500 is extra. Well, you go, okay, well, the $500 came in on the first, And I'm only doing the 16th through the 30th of the previous month, not the first. So I'm really only balancing to 3,501 minus 501, right? Because that $1 for the outstanding balance and the 500 that you're not including. And it's like, oh, 3,000, 3,000, 3,000, I'm balanced. Does that make sense? Okay. So. That's the, and, and then when you go to pay it out, you will leave the $501 in the bank account because the $500 is for the next period. You'll leave that in the business income account. Okay. So you don't mess with your head. Don't steal from that. It gets really hard to balance later. Okay. <coughs> All right. Now, at the end, you're going to always leave that $1 in there, even if you don't have any extra. So you don't take your bank account to zero and end up paying fees to the bank, right? Okay. Whatever your minimum balance is, that's you're always going to leave that in there. Okay. Now, let's go on to taxes and profits. All right. So tax rate. Now, this is set up for me because I live in Panama and I do not pay income tax in Panama, up to $120,000 a year. So my tax rate is 15%, which is my self-employment tax. Yours will be higher, okay? So here's how you do that math. 
Go to your last year's tax return. Look at the total amount of taxes that you paid. Divide that number by your gross income, which is the top of your Schedule C. And that will give you the percentage that you're going to put in here. Okay. So the total taxes paid will be like one of the last lines in your tax form. And the gross income is going to be the top gross income from your Schedule C. Okay. That's how this math is going to work. Now, yours is probably going to be 20, 22 to 33%. Okay. <clears throat> Depending on how good you are at, at, at pulling your taxes out, pulling your expenses out, rather. I am the queen of pulling expenses out. So I, I expense as much as humanly, legally possible. And, uh, you, you know, doing so, you can write off a lot of your life. Mileage. We didn't even talk about mileage. If you are going anywhere for your sessions or your services, anytime you're going to meet a client, if you're going to have uh, lunch with somebody, if you're going to go to the store and buy supplies, all of that is business mileage. Do yourself a favor, get an app called Mile IQ. That, that app is the best thing since sliced bread. It uses GPS to determine your, your trips. And all you have to do is go in and categorize them. At the end of every week, you go in and categorize it. And it's, you say personal or business. And at the end of the year, you hit the button, it prints out a 24, 30 page report of how much of your, and, and categorizes all of your drives and, and mileage and everything. It's everything the IRS needs. Okay. And that can be a huge expense to write off of your taxes if you track it properly. Okay. So super, super, and it's 60 bucks for the year. It will save you so much more than that. It's not even funny. I think the last time I wrote off mileage <clears throat> was, uh, I think I had like $2,000 worth of mileage expense. So absolutely worth the 60 bucks I paid for the, for the program. Okay. Now, you know, uh, this will tell you exactly what you owe based on the income and expenses that you've listed. Okay. Now, this is pulling the number based on the, is that right? Oh, that's gross. Hey, sorry, I lost power here. <laughs> so uh, I'm not going to be able to share my screen because my computer has no internet. So anyway, the, uh, the, the spreadsheet will pull from your total. Here, let me get this. Is that spreadsheet in the packet? Can I open it and share it? Would that be helpful? Yes. Oh, that would be super helpful. Thank you. It is in the profit, uh, the the uh, plentiful profits. That their folder. Yeah. So, um, Let it's in the that. the only lesson that's in there. So, <clears throat> the um. However, the uh, so what they recommend for profit percentage. I've got five percent in, which is mine, uh, but they they recommend that you start at one percent. Okay. And what he says is you should actually, I, I misspoke earlier. You're supposed to pay your taxes, yourself and your profits, and then everything else. And so the percentage that's in there is 5% right now, but you should change it. I'm going to, um, it won't make any difference if I change it because I'm not online, but I'll change it to 1% so that when you copy it, you'll get it. So you should be being prompted to copy it. Is that, did you get that? 
Um, I gotta sign in here. Oh, okay. Oh, it it wants my other email, so let me. Yeah, see. that's okay. Don't worry about it. It doesn't okay. need to. Not a big deal. Well, it was so, saying that I needed to request access. Oh, okay. I'll fix that when I can get back online. So, the um, the upshot is that in the top section, it's going to tell you what you should pay in the red, and then the bottom section in the green is what you did pay. Okay, so that you can tell the difference between what you were supposed to pay versus what you did pay. And um, so the top section tells you what to pay, and it says the 20th of the current month or the 5th of the following month. Same thing for both the taxes and for the profit account. And then, then the bottom, it says this is what I put into those accounts. And then it also gives you a running balance on it, and you can say what taxes you paid to the, the IRS, and that tells you what is, and you can balance that against your tax account. And that should help you do that. Now, your tax account should be a savings account, which means you'll have to adjust those numbers based on the interest rate that you're receiving off of those, uh, off of that money, but uh, it shouldn't be too much. Should, you can put that in as a, uh, well, it says interest earned. So you have the option to stick interest earned in there too. Now. You can do the same thing on the profits paid section at the bottom. You show how you paid it. Okay. You either, you know, if you moved it to the operating expense account, which you shouldn't do because that's not paying yourself. But, you know, if things get tight occasionally, that happens. But it gives you a little extra zhuzh space. Now, let's talk about the prepaid account. Your prepaid account. So let's say that you got paid. So I have a client right now who, um, I have a client I, I worked with recently and um, she got a $40,000 contract for the year. Okay. Um, corporate deal got paid in January for the year. Now, ideally you would take one twelfth of that and put it in your operating account and 11 twelfths of that and stick it in your prepaid account. And so every month you would pay yourself out of that prepaid account for that month's worth of work. But that's not often what we do. And then we end up with having no money. And then we feel like I'm doing all this work for free. It's like, no, you prepaid yourself. There's a difference, right? So stick the money in a prepaid account, savings account, making interest and pay yourself every month. And then you won't feel like that. Okay, that's number one. Number two is the same thing with any package, right? So you're going to do that the same way with any package. And let me say this. I, there, there are all kinds of people out there who tell you to charge, you know, oh, it's a $6,000 program. It's 5000 if you pay in advance. I don't want to give people $1,000 off the price. Okay. I would rather have the monthly payments because then I know I have recurring income. I much prefer regular monthly payments to a single lump sum payment because then I know I have recurring income. So I'm a big fan of don't incentivize people to pay you up front. Okay. Now, Uh, that's the prepaid taxes. What was the other one? Hold on. Let's see if there's something else. Vacation sick leave. Yes, I knew there was something else I wanted to talk about. So on the vacation and sick leave account, think about how often you get sick and how, how long you're down for. Okay. So if you know you get sick for a week or two weeks every year, then you need to be putting aside enough money in your account to cover you for those periods, right? And then think about where you wanna take your next vacation and how many vacations you wanna take in the next year and how much those cost and what your lost income is for being away during that time, okay? And then you're gonna divide those numbers by 12. And every month, that's how much you're going to put into that vacation and sick leave account. 
Okay. So let's say for instance, and I don't have my phone with me. Oh, I do have my phone with me. I'm looking at it. That's what I'm talking on. Hello. Yes. Um, so I can't do my, my mouth on it, but uh, let's say that you make, <clears throat> let's round numbers, 20, 240 bucks. No, let's say you'd make $2,400 a week because I want to do easy math, right? $2,400 a week is $200 a month that you pay into your, you divide 2,400 by 12, right? If you know you're going to be out for a week sick once a year, you're going to put $200 a month into your account to cover you for that period, right? And let's say you want to go on vacation and you're going to take a week long vacation. So that's 2,400. So it's $200 a month, right? Um, plus the cost of the vacation. So let's again, do easy math and say the vacation itself is $4,800. And so divided by 12, that's 400. No, it's math, math, don't math. 480 bucks. Is that right? I don't know. Uh, no, it should be $400, $400. I can do math, really. Okay, so the vacation is $400. So 4,800 divided by 12 is $400, I think. Um, and uh, so that 400 plus the 200 extra for the week that you're taking off, that's $600 a month will pay for your week off plus your cost of your vacation. And now you don't have to be going on vacation going, you yeah, don't know if I can pay for this. What am I going to do, right? So that, okay, that's what you do with your vacation and sick leave account. Now, these are your business accounts. There is stuff you should be doing with your personal stuff that he talks about in the book. I highly recommend you get the book because it's stuff about putting money into savings and setting up for your investments and all the shebang, right? So all of that. And I recommend that you do that. All right, now. Let's talk about, so the last tab on the spreadsheet is your personal expenses. It is important for you to know how much you have going out every single month, okay? I have given you some basics, okay? You're gonna want to go through your personal bank account and go through a month worth of expenses. And I'm gonna really re um, recommend that you go through three months worth of expenses because there are things that don't happen every single month, right? There are, there are expenses that you pay every two or three months, right? And then there are some things that are only once a year. So you need to think about what your once a year expenses are too, right? So you wanna have a budget. You need to know how much money is going out so you know how much money you need to be making. And that money you're making needs to be post-tax money because you gotta pay for the taxes. So you need to know how much money needs to be coming in for your personal expenses. And then you also need to know for your business expenses. So business expenses are in the first two forms and the first two, two um, pages within this document. Your personal expenses are in the last page, okay? So make sure that you've got <clears throat> all of this stuff laid out so that you are in congruency with your money so that your money will increase. When you keep track of things, when you know what's going on, you should be, so what I do every month or every two weeks is I sit down and I, now put it in your calendar, okay? It is in my calendar for the 5th and the 20th of every month. Now, if that falls on a weekend, I do shove it to the following Monday just because I'm lazy and I don't want to do it on the weekend. Um, I like to have my time off, but put it on the 5th and the 20th. You can always move it if it needs to be moved. And so on the, on the like yesterday was the 20th and it was a Sunday. So this morning I did my accounting. Okay. <laughs> and what I do first is I open up my Stripe account because that's where I get the vast majority of my cash in from. And I take my transactions and I balance those. I look and see if there's anything that's not recurring. I'm like, okay, this, this was an individual purchase. I need to go put that into my miscellaneous income. So that's the first thing I do. So I do that. Then I go and I open up my business bank account and I say, okay, the business income account, how much is that? And I compare it against that uh, miscellaneous payments income section to see if it balances. If it doesn't, I figure out why. 
oftentimes it's because, you know, somebody did a return and I had to pay a fee that wasn't listed. So that'll be a negative income on the miscellaneous payments section. I put that in as a negative um, or it's, uh, you know, I got a, a deposit from something random or whatever. Right. All right. Oddly, sometimes even the recurring expenses can be weird if somebody's it, sometimes the card doesn't um, doesn't come through in the same way. So <clears throat> that's that's kind of strange. So sometimes it'll be a weird, different amount. Um, it's rare, but it happens. And uh, so sometimes that's where it's off by. OK, you just got to go searching for where the numbers are not right. And then once I balance, then I go and I go in and I check all of the expenses on the business account and the operating expense account. And I make sure that all of those expenses are in my spreadsheet. And then from there, <clears throat> I go through and I, um, words. And then I go through and I make my transfers. Okay, so I check my, so I, I transfer my money from the business income account to me personally for my, my salary. And then I transfer the tax money into the tax savings account. And then I transfer profits. And then I transfer the balance of everything that's left uh, in that business income account minus whatever wasn't due to be dealt with yet. Um, and that $1 to keep the account open um, into the operating expense account. And then I check the operating expense account and I say, okay, <clears throat> I check that number that's in there minus my cushion. And I check that against the amount on the income and expenses sheet. That is the pay this amount deposit into OPEX on this date. So th today was the 20th, the, you know, we were doing the 20th stuff. So it would be against that number. And I go, okay, is there enough in there to cover the expenses for the month. If not, then I may pull some out of the prepaid account to cover that. Um, or I may look at putting something on a credit card that normally gets paid cash. Thing, or I may look at it eliminating some expenses. All of these things are options. Any questions? You had covered in another SN program the 30-30, um, 10-20-20 the as mm -hmm. to how ideally. Is it appropriate to recite that at this moment? Yeah, I mean, it would work. Uh, I'm trying to remember exactly what it is. Uh, so that so let me be clear. The 30-30, 10-20-whatever um, is that number is based on post-tax money from your, um, it's post-tax money that you get paid. So it's, it's the salary amount that you get, right? So I said, the first thing I transfer is my salary. So out of that money that comes into my personal account, I would put it through that structure, okay? I don't personally, but the wisdom is to do it. <laughs> I will get there eventually, but not today. So <laughs> probably not tomorrow either. But the idea is that, you know, 10% of the money goes to fun and 10% goes to long-term savings and 30% goes to, I can't remember what the details are. This I got this number set up from Janine Bolin. So, um, you know, it, it's it's a smart way to do it. I just, I I haven't. And so, um, but that gives you money to be putting away for savings and things like that on a regular basis. And, you know, some of it's for, when I say fun, and that's things like vacations and things like that. But um, I'm a big fan of, you know, put that money aside first, right? So, yeah. And, you know, you may want to choose to do the vacation cash, like that $4,800 we were talking about. You may want to do that out of your personal account and do the business loss stuff out of the business account. Because just for the record, those are not tax deductible. Okay, putting those money, that money aside is not tax deductible. 
you know, debt service is also not tax deductible, but you'll notice that it's on the personal account. And I do actually pay debts out of the business account when I have debt uh, that is business related. So, um, but the debt service itself is not tax deductible because you have already deducted the expense that caused the debt. And that's why the debt service is not deductible. If all you have on that credit card is business expense, then the interest on that credit card is tax deductible. But if you mix any personal stuff into that, you can't deduct the interest. Okay. So uh, be careful about doing a cruise because a cruise, if you're doing a cruise for business purposes, a cruise is considered transportation and is not deductible in the same way that a hotel would be. Last I heard, consult your tax professional. So all of these things. Any other questions? No, that, that, um, I, we were playing the 10 X game yesterday and the whole, what you need to make or, and I, I stated my income and broke it down, down, down. And it's like, how'd you come up with that's what you need? And it's like, well, there's the 30, 30, 10, 10, 20 rule. And I could not recite it off the tip of my tongue. Yeah. Um, some of that money is taxes, which is already accounted for in the numbers that we've done, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So, so it, it doesn't apply exactly to I think 30% was for tax. Yeah, if I remember correctly, 30% was for tax. So that, you know, doesn't apply in this scenario, right? Because the taxes are already accounted for in the numbers that we're doing here. Because I like to have your business pay your taxes, right? Put the money aside before you ever see it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, outside of doing it in a spreadsheet, do you have a personal favorite software that is able to read bank statements to help you categorize it? I don't like the softwares out there. Um, so there's there, <clears throat> there's several reasons why I have not transitioned. I've tried to transition to both Zero and to uh, QuickBooks. Uh, and I had problems. None of them would give me projections. And I, so like my income is recurring based on number of months of programs. And so I can look ahead and say, okay, I enrolled these eight people, you know, 12, 10 months ago, two months from now, my income is going to crater um, short of, re, you know, re-upping them into the next program because eight people are all completing at the same time. And I need to know that so I can do a run up and get some more income coming in, get some more people in, make sure that I convert those people into the next program, whatever. Right. Um, QuickBooks and Zero. everybody I talk to says that they can't do that. And so, you know, that's problematic for me. And so uh, I keep the spreadsheet the way I keep the spreadsheet for that reason. And honestly, the amount of transactions that come through my account are not that many. I mean, you're talking maybe 40 in a two month, a two week period. It's not that many. And 90% of them are already in the spreadsheet because you've put them in once and they're recurring, right? So the amount of entries I have to do, I, I put like four things in every single pay, period. So maybe eight a month that I add into the spreadsheet that weren't there before. So it's really minimal effort to do it. You just got to sit down and look at the spreadsheet and da, da, da. it's like, okay, yep, I recognize that one, that one, that one, that one. Those are recurring, 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 you know, 90% of them are recurring charges. Okay. So the first time you set it up, it's a lot of work. And every month thereafter, it's so much easier. Super. Yeah. I'm just looking at changing. I've been with QuickBooks for years because I used to do payroll. I don't want to do payroll. I'm paying a lot of stinking money for something that I am not using fully. And I've looked at some other things. Um, 
and just kind of figuring out, okay, when I drop this, where do I go? Um, having used other softwares in the past a long, long time ago that didn't read the bank statement is um, challenging. I think most of them, most because, of them read the bank statements these days. Yeah. Yeah. And what I have to <laughs> input, it, it creates, it, it elevates the level of frustration with my, uh, my uh, transcribing numbers inappropriately and wrong. And yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm not the brain that says, oh, if it was off by 29 cents, then this is what you're looking for. No. Right. So that's where I feel that that is a crutch that I feel I need to have in order to not stress myself clear out. Yeah. Well, you can go and balance your expenses <clears throat> against the expenses on your bank statement. Um, you can compare those. Uh, the totals are there, so you can just take those and compare them. I just haven't been doing it because I've just been looking at every single transaction to make sure I type it in. And if it's off by 20 cents, I don't think I care. So I'm 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 lazy. It's it's not good, but I am. I'm being honest. So uh, but you could, you could absolutely do that. And I should, and I probably will start to do that now that I've been thinking about it, but I hadn't been thinking about it before. And I think this late in the year, I probably will look at uh, finding something to start next year fresh rather than, you know, because it's, yeah. it's October. This is time to do the um, get your taxes done, which is really you know, not get your taxes, get everything in and start thinking about taxes. So, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. not The reason I, I mean, I could go to a QuickBooks, but I don't because I know myself. If I don't have to open up the spreadsheet every two weeks to do my accounting, I would not. And then I would not see the projections. You know, it's, it's, you've got to, you've got to plan for your own, you know, the things that you know you'll do and won't do. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I love this spreadsheet. I've been using it for years. I mean, I'm probably, I don't know, seven, eight years now. Works great. And I can take all of this stuff and just copy and paste it in very short order into a, a, a income statement. So, you know, for the taxes, I just take it, sort it, you know, I, I go, I copy the, to do my taxes, I copy my income and expenses tab uh, data and I copy it into a new tab and I then put a category next to each thing that's in the, sh the sheet. So I know what categories are on the Schedule C. And I put what category that applies to. And then I just sort based on the category. And then I just subtitle, you know, sub, you know sum up the, sh the categories, stick in some extra lines so that I can tell one from another. And I'm off to the races. So takes like I, 40 minutes. Yeah, I think that that's what's going to come down to is I just need to adapt a spreadsheet that I can function with and go from there. And if I'm doing yeah. it, when I'm doing it diligently every two weeks, it would not be overwhelming. It is not. So, so yeah. Okay. Anything right. else? Or are we complete for the day? I think we're complete for the day. All right. Well, sorry for the loss of power. I'm surprised it's not back up again. It should be interesting for my podcast in an hour. Um, I will uh, see you guys around the, the bend here. This is the, the last one in the series for the moment. And so, uh, you know, we'll see you when we see you. Sounds good. All right. All right. Thanks, Kelly. Right. Have a good one. Uh, bye bye. Bye.